You know, there are a few things that I find more disappointing. And the videos that I see where the tiller pilot monkey has come loose in service, either in heavy weather or just out of fatigue, really. Because it's one of those things where you know when you install it that it's going to be under a very high load very often, and uh, you need to design it and install it in a way that so that nothing really, no weather, nothing falling on it. I mean, I've had that happen on the boat. Other people have fallen on the tiller while it's connected to the tiller pilot. So that nothing can move it, um, no matter what, really. So today, having acquired a new tiller pilot, I'm going to go and secure my tiller monkey um, so that it absolutely cannot move. I've also redesigned it a little bit. When mine broke, broke off, I knew it was coming. It uh, worked loose, I knew it was going to happen. And it gave me cause to think about it. Um, so let me show you what I've done. Of course, no visit to the boat is ever complete unless I've had to crawl into the uh, starboard locker. Again. bolts I put in because the new uh, tiller pilot is um, a little bit, it requires a taller monkey on there for it to work properly. Unfortunately these bolts are a little bit too short so I've got some others which we'll see in a moment. So these are the ones that weren't quite biting into the, uh, the tiller monkey there. And those are the replacements. Which I'm going to put in now. Reminds me of that scene at a lethal weapon. Mel Gibson deliberately dislocates his shoulder so he can get out of <laughs> wherever it is. Of course, the deck in this area is only, well it's solid fiberglass, so it's only about half an inch thick, so I'm not going to use a backing plate on this, because, as you'll see in a minute, I've already fiberglassed an upstand into the deck. Uh, hardwood upstand. So I think the chances of this well, tearing through the deck, it's not going to happen, is it, let's be honest. You know, it must be strong, but there's no need to go crazy. And I think that four 6mm stainless steel coach, coach screws are enough to persuade it that actually it's better to just stay there. It's excellent, actually. Okay. Four more to go. Three more, three more to go. Done. 
well that worked. That went as expected. We must thank God for small mercies. keys on top of the roof. Full it. Yeah, I have that's what I've got. Incredible really. Uh, right, let's have a look at this. Obviously I need to clean up my Sikaflex and I haven't painted this because I'm beginning to strip the deck because uh, I'm going to repaint it this winter. Um, so there's a few places where I've taken out great wads of paint. Um, and once I ground this off I just left it so I can do it all at once. Um, so I've got the square base. This is the pyramid of navigation right here. I've got the square base. The reason for that is uh, when that tiller pilot uh, pulls back and forth, um, it, it loads this edge. If that was a round base, what you'd get is really quite high point loading here, which wouldn't make any difference until it started to work loose. And what you'd get then is really high loads, and that's what happened with the last one. Um, it was a round base, and as soon as it starts to uh, rot or whatever, come a bit loose and starts to rock there, you get a really high pressure point there and then a really high pressure point at the back and in the end, failure is inevitable. Um, so, I've got the square base, those four stainless steel coach bolts probably come up to about there. This is uh, Sapili that I've laminated together, just bits of scrap. Uh, scrap. Um, I know it's the right height for the new tiller pilot, that's going to be beautiful and it's absolutely immovable. <laughs> It's not going to come off. Um, so that's it. Just a short one. It's like, oh, wait, I promised. 